Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I have my mid-August wrap-up for you. I am filming this a little bit earlier, so if you're like looking at my Goodreads and it doesn't line up, that is why. It's currently August 12th, but I have already read 14 books this month, so I figured I would film this now. I'm also going to be on vacation for a little bit towards the end of August, so I'm not going to be reading as much then. So I figured this would like balance it out a little bit. So this is going to be the 14 books that I read in the first 12 days of the month. The first two books I read were Dirty Empire and Fallen Empire by Nina West, which is Kay Tucker. And these are the last two books in the Empire Nightclub series, I think it's called. I really loved this series. The series follows a woman who is visiting her dad in prison, who has sort of, her dad's kind of, doesn't really belong in prison, basically, is sort of the storyline. And this guy is there meeting his dad in prison, and his dad is like a mafia dude, so he like should probably be in prison and this girl is getting worried about her dad being in the prison and like he's getting beat up by the cousin of the guy that he killed and she's like worried that he's not even gonna make it out of prison alive and this guy that she sees visiting his dad meets her in the parking lot and sort of propositions her like hey if like you hook up with me I'll you know get your dad protection on the inside kind of thing and she's like, you know, heck no, like that's not gonna happen. And that's like the f in the first book, that's how it starts. And then obviously things sort of progress from there. I found that these last two books focused a little bit more on the sort of mafia action aspects of the story as opposed to the romance aspect. And I was okay with that because I did find that it was still entertaining and I did fly through these books super, super quickly because I did really enjoy them. My only complaint was in the last book I found that the overall ending wrapped up a little too nicely. It was very convenient, very, you know, every single piece fell into place kind of thing. And I've never read a book that I felt really did that like this one did. And so I thought that was like not something that I was a super big fan of. But I still gave these both four stars because I did really like them overall. Probably would give the series four stars. Like I said, did really like it. Next I read Medicine Man by Saffron Kent and this one I was so hyped up for. I have wanted to read this book for like a year and a half, two years, and just never for whatever reason got around to it. I knew it was a little bit of a longer book so I didn't really like pick it up to read physically and so when I found out I had access to the audiobook this was like the first, one of the first ones I was like I have to listen to this one and I was so let down. I think a lot of it was my own fault because like I said I've wanted to read this book for so long and for whatever reason something about it was just like really speaking to me. I was like I'm gonna love this book, it's gonna be a five star read, you know, it's gonna be great, whatever. I ended up giving this I think two stars. I really really hated the writing in this book and I've honestly I don't think ever said that about a book before but I just, I don't know, I found the author's word choice when it came to pretty much everything in this book I wasn't a fan of, um, particularly in like the spicy parts if you want to call it that. I hated all of her word choices, I just wasn't a fan, I found it super cringy, it's taking me out of the story, I just like wasn't vibing. If you don't know about this one it follows a girl who's basically in a psychiatric hospital who ends up sort of dating her psychologist I guess he is, or psychiatrist, and you know obviously that's like this whole like forbidden thing going on she is 18 I think and he's like 35 or something I don't even know maybe she's 19 there's a big age gap between them but I just couldn't get into this one because I didn't like it like I said I didn't like the writing I didn't like much out of this one and so that was a little bit disappointing next I read The Beast by Katie Robert this is the fourth book I think in the Wicked Villains series and I basically was trying to just like wrap this series up this month and I obviously read this one. This one follows Isabel who is kind of got these two guys. There's Beast and Gaetan obviously. It's like supposed to be like the Beast and Gaston from Beauty and the Beast. And in this particular story she, I believe she's trying to get them to come back to her like kingdom or whatever. Like her sister sent her to go get these two guys to come back to them after her father passes away and she goes to find them and they're basically like okay we'll make you a deal like if you basically sleep with both of us for two weeks and then you finally pick one of us at the end then like we'll come back 
kind of thing. And she's like, okay, like that sounds totally reasonable. Let's do that. And that's like this whole book. I gave this one four stars. I said going into this one, I was not expecting much in the way of plot. And so I think because of that, I wasn't disappointed. If you go into these books expecting like, you know, some really intricate plot lines, you're not going to get that. But I think for like what they are, they're okay. Next I read The Sea Witch, which is the next book in the series. I really didn't like this one. This was easily my least favorite one in the series. This one is sort of like a Little Mermaid kind of vibes book. It follows Ursa, who basically is like hooking up with this guy, Alaric, who is basically like the equivalent of Prince Eric. And there's this girl, Zuriel, or they call her Zuri, who's obviously supposed to be like Ariel. So. Zuri decides that she is going to basically auction herself off to get all this money to save Alaric from like the underworld or like whatever and so she like enters this auction and Ursa ends up bidding like a ton of money on her and she gets the money and she's like oh good like now I can free Alaric and whatever but like Alaric literally like does not care about Zuri at all like not even a little bit and I hated that aspect of the story I didn't really care for like where it went afterwards either. I just found the whole thing was kind of stupid because this girl was like doing everything for this guy that literally like didn't care about her at all. And I was just like, dude, you could have just like gone on with your life and been fine and not had any of these issues, but you chose to rescue a guy who didn't want to be rescued. And I just, I don't know, didn't really care for it. Gave this one two stars. Was definitely my least favorite of the books in the series. Lastly, in the series, I read Queen Takes Rose, which is the last book of the series, obviously. This one follows sort of like, I guess, Sleeping Beauty story. So this one has Aurora and Malone. Obviously Malone is sort of supposed to be like Maleficent, except in this particular book, Aurora's mother has been in a coma for years. So it's not Aurora herself who's been asleep, it's her mother. And she knows that Malone is responsible for like what put her mom in the hospital. So she decides to like enter this deal with her where she basically is like living with Malone for two weeks and her plan is like she's gonna kill her to like you know make up for her mom and this one was good I will say this one I would say out of the whole series had the best plot like outside of the smut aspects of the story like it definitely could carry itself in the plot department which was nice it's obviously a sapphic book which was nice as well this is probably like I would say my favorite sapphic romance I've ever read gave this one four stars not sure this might have been my favorite out of the series but I will say overall the series for me was probably like a three star series it wasn't super great if you're just going into it like knowing what it is which is not a lot of plot then maybe you'll enjoy it but other than that, it was okay. Next was Handle with Care by Helena Hunting. This is part of the Shacking Up series, even though it looks nothing like the Shacking Up books, which is sort of odd. This is book number five, I believe, in that series. I am missing one of the other books. I haven't read it yet, but they're like companion series, so it doesn't matter. And this one follows a girl who is basically hired to manage this guy's very chaotic life. He is in the spotlight and she is in charge of his social media and like making sure he doesn't you know like do stupid things at press events and whatever and they find out that this guy's brother is coming home to sort of like work for the company again and the mom of these two boys hires this girl to work with both of them she's like okay my other son is coming in I need you to do the same thing for him that you're doing for this son and so she's like okay fine like no problem and she's expecting this other son to kind of be like a jerk like the other guy but he comes and he just like doesn't really want anything to do with the business he's like a super woodsy like outdoorsy guy and all of a sudden he's like trying to get suits and like all these things and so she ends up like you know taking him to get suits and like doing all these different things with him they're just spending a lot of time together and things sort of go from there this one is really cute gave it four stars not my favorite Helena hunting but not terrible either Next was With You Forever by Chloe Lease. This is the fourth book, I think, in the Bergman Brothers series. This one follows Axel, who I believe is the oldest brother of the siblings, and Rooney, who is like the best friend of one of the girls from the other books. And they finally get together. This one is a marriage of convenience book. Basically, Axel is trying to fix up his family's A-frame and he doesn't want them to know so he doesn't want to ask them for money or anything and he's having issues painting so he's not selling anything he's not making any money but he has this inheritance that his uncle has left him but he can only get it if he's married 
so they sort of decide that he will marry Rooney because she's like always around anyway and like he's like you know it won't be weird we'll just like be married on paper kind of thing and they end up spending a lot of time together at this A-frame because she goes there tr kind of trying to get away from the world thinking that no one is going to be there at the time and then obviously he's staying there trying to fix it up but he didn't tell anyone because he didn't want anyone to know and so they end up spending a ton of time together. I really liked this one. It definitely had like some more like outdoorsy vibes which I've been really loving lately in my romance books so that was really nice as well. Gave this one four stars. Really loved the series as a whole. The next three books I read were the Summer I Turned Pretty series and I did an entire reading vlog for this. It will be out very very soon so I'm not going to go you know too in depth on these. I will say I liked the first two. I hated the last book. The last book honestly tainted my entire view of the first two books. I don't think I'll ever reread this. I wasn't a huge fan. I'm not sure where the hype comes from because like just really didn't vibe with this book at all. I think my main issue and I wish I had mentioned this in the reading vlog but I like was just like so angry when I filmed that but I I didn't like that throughout the course of this series the author very clearly tries to sway you to like you know different guys at different points like there's Conrad and Jeremiah that you're kind of trying to decide between in this book like with the love triangle and I feel like at certain points the author really you know makes you like Conrad and other points she really makes you like Jeremiah like it's not your decision of who you're rooting for it's just kind of like she makes it like oh you can't decide because I'm gonna make this character do this or that or whatever and it made it so that I found the two boys were almost interchangeable because she would change how they acted just depending on who she wanted you to root for like Jeremiah in the second book was like the sweetest guy on the planet and then in the last book he is like the biggest jerk on the planet and it's like okay but like where was that like that's not the Jeremiah we saw in book two and I really hated that and overall I would say maybe the series was like a three star series I don't know I'm still so like mad <laughs> about that book that like I don't even want to like think about it anymore so that is all I'm gonna say on that like I said there will be a reading vlog prepare for me to rant a lot in that reading vlog because I definitely did next was everything for you by Chloe Lease this is the last book in the Bergman Brothers series that is out currently it's not the last one period but it is the last one currently available this one is an MM sports romance which I was super hyped for it's enemies to lovers it's age gap it's all the good things in one book I love this book I think I gave it four and a half stars it wasn't quite like on my level of like five star I'm obsessed with this book but it was super super good I really enjoyed it like I said it's got all the good tropes in it it follows a guy who is on a soccer team and he becomes co-captain with the guy that he has sort of looked up to as a kid it was like his soccer idol and they are now co-captaining but they can't stand each other and they're also neighbors so they're like in each other's faces like all the time and it's just like it's so good and it's like grumpy sunshine it's just like it's got so many good tropes in this book honestly like I can't believe how many good tropes she managed to squeeze into this book because it's insane and like I said really really loved it it reminded me a lot of Culty by Mariana Zapata if you've read that one kind of with the soccer player sort of working with her idol kind of thing definitely gave me those vibes really really loved this one like I said definitely my favorite in the series so far next was Garnet Flats by Debbie Perry this is the newest book in the Eden series which if you know me you know I love the Edens like crazy and I was super excited for this book I ended up not loving it as much as I was hoping I gave it four stars which is this is the first book in the series that I have not given five stars to but I do think a lot of my issues were personal because I in general just do not like fighters in my romances I don't know why I, I don't like boxers, underground fighters, MMA fighters, like whatever, like I really don't care. I just, I don't like them. And it's not even the fact that I don't like them as characters because like even in this book I was fine with Foster until it got to the point where he had his last fight and whatever and like I don't care about like boxing fight scenes I guess. Like I don't mind a fight scene if it's like actually happening like on the street or whatever, like they just get into a fight, but I hate like scenes that are written like boxing matches like to me that's just they're so boring and you always know like who's gonna win before it happens because like obviously like in the book like you can tell which way it's gonna go because like that's important but like I don't know I just hate those scenes and the fighting romance books always have one of those scenes and so it's just not like something I really enjoy I did like the overall sort of premise of this book I did feel like I was missing a little bit of that sort of like 
mystery element that I know was in the first book. I can't really remember if there was one in Juniper Hill, but I do know I really loved Juniper Hill, so maybe that doesn't matter. But I found in this one, like, I was missing a sort of, like, secondary plot line, and maybe that's just me, I don't know, but like I said, I gave this one four stars. It was good, but, like, I didn't feel like it lived up to the first two books. And lastly, I read Lyrics of a Small Town by Abby Glines. This one I was kind of disappointed by as well. I think it was myself, again. Like, I think it was me that was probably the problem, not the book. But I remember reading somewhere, and this is, like, so strange because I, I don't know where I read this, but I want to say it came directly from Abby Glines. And I read somewhere before this book was released that it was, that it was supposed to be, like, her steamiest book yet like something along those lines like that it was the spiciest or the steamiest or like whatever and I was like you know Abby Klein's books are pretty like solid in that department to begin with so I was like I'm curious to see what she's gonna do with this one honestly I read this book four or five days ago I don't even remember the characters getting together in the book like, they must have, but, like, it was obviously so unmemorable that I literally couldn't even tell you where it was or when it was or what. And that's just, like, so weird to me because, like I said, I remember reading that somewhere. And so I wasn't, like, a huge fan of that. I didn't like the... I mean, the plot line was good, but I didn't like two things about this. One was that she spends way more time with Rio in this book than she does with Saul, and Saul is supposed to be the guy she's, like, getting with. And I also didn't like that Saul was kind of, like, he was possessive, but, like, not the good kind of possessive. Like, the girl in this book is hanging out with a guy who there is literally zero chance of her ever getting with. Like, she literally would never, it would never happen, like, not even a concern that she's gonna get with this guy. And yet Saul was like, you can't hang out with him alone, like, I don't want you with him, like blah 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 and he was like getting mad at her for like hanging out with this guy and I was like dude like there's literally zero chance of these two ever getting together and it just bothered me that he was like no you can't even sit in a room with a guy if I'm not present and I was like really and it was just like the wrong kind of possessive I think it was just like possessive for the sake of being possessive like there was no reason for it and I didn't love that like I said she spends so much time with Rio in this and Saul I felt like was barely even in the book like he was such a side character to me, which was so strange because it was like his book. I gave this one three and a half stars, I think, because it wasn't quite like a three star book, but it definitely wasn't a four star book. And so I like went with three and a half. I'm feeling pretty good about that. Like I said, wasn't the biggest fan of this. I will read the second one because I do want to, you know, see Rio's story. But overall, I was a little disappointed by this one. And so those are all the books I've read so far this month. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below. I do new book videos every single week, and I'll see you next time.